Barely Emerging is recorded on the lands of the Ghana people. We at Hauntakau Collective acknowledge the Ghana people and all other Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples as the sovereign custodians of this country, and we pay our respects to Elders past and present. This always was and always will be Aboriginal land. You are famous because of your husband is utter bullshit. I was going to say, where to back up your mate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, she's got talent. Hello, hello. I hope you're all hungry because we are here with another batch of two minute Googles for you. Today, we are looking at the other guys. So, painters throughout history that have probably been way more overshadowed by their contemporaries. Mm-hmm. I'm Frances. And I'm Sid. So my other guy is actually a girl. So is mine. Yeah. So we have the other gal. The other gals. So for this episode, I looked up Lee Krasner. She mm-hmm. is famously known as Mrs. Jackson Pollock. Mrs. Jackson Pollock, which... Yep. Sucks. <laughs> yeah, <it does. laughs> I mean, like bummer for her. Yeah, Jackson Pollock, great. You know, I love Jackson Pollock's artwork, but can't have been an easy person to be married to. No, no. So Lee Krasner, she was within the abstract expressionism modern art era. So a lot of her work was in the sixties. She was born in nineteen oh eight, died in nineteen eighty four. Her contemporaries are De Kooning, mm-hmm. Brock, and Jackson Pollock, obviously, and also Greenberg, mm-hmm. which she was the one who introduced all of these names to Jackson Pollock, who were very oh, influential uh, to so his she, success. she like invented him in a way in a way they were both established uh sort of established artists before they got mm. together and a lot of the misconception was that jackson pollock made krasner yeah which it was yeah. kind of you could argue the, the other, other way, way. around mm-hmm. something that also hans hoffman had said to krasner while she was study- studying under him and he thought that it was great praise to her and had said, wow, your work, I could have mistaken it for a man's work. Oof. And that was supposed to be very high praise for her because in that point of time, if you are a woman, it's feminine art. Oh, gosh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Landscapes and pretty flowers and all that sort of stuff. They had a very. I understand his meaning, and I know at the time yeah. that was, you know, considered high praise. But yeah. to to my twenty twenty four ears, oof, yucky. So Krasner, she was very inf- influential in um, the New York art scene. She was right smack bang in the middle of it, but she had to struggle with being Jackson Pollock's wife. So I just love that she had to struggle with being Jackson Pollock's wife because it's like, yeah, that's fair. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fair I mean, call. that can't have been easy. <laughs> yeah, we we all know that um, Jackson Pollock struggled with alcoholism and he there was infidelity and then later his death. Something that was said about Krasner was that she painted through all of this. When it came to Krasner's work, she really went with what she was feeling in that time. So if she wanted to do mosaics, she would do them. If she wanted to do collage, she would do it. She cut up all of her old work, all of her uh, cubism work that she did under. Hoffman and collaged them all. She did all over painting and one of the ones that I love of her work is the the little things, the the hier- little hieroglyphics. So while the male painters of her generation, there is a bird and we are going to leave it in now because <laughs> We can't we've deal we've with tried it. yelling at it. We've yeah. tried being reasonable with it, but it won't shut the fuck up. So we're here now. Really wants to be a guest on the show. So it just has really, really strong opinions about Lee Krasner's <laughs> place in the art canon. It really, <laughs> and I don't even know if you guys can hear the bird, but the bird is there. The bird is within us all. The bird is the friends we made along the way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. So uh, while male painters of her generation, so De Kooning, Rothko, Motherwell, developed highly recognizable signature styles when it came to what she wanted to paint or make at that time she did it um she only had one opportunity for herself within 
her heyday and then later, retrospectively, she's had another exhibition at the Barbican. I've got a link to the Barbican, a YouTube video of them talking about that exhibition, which is a really good listen. It is hard because I know a lot about Jackson Pollock Mm -hmm. and I am very much guilty of knowing Lee Krasner as Mrs. Jackson Pollock, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and it's as personally volatile as, you know, Jackson Pollock was, you know, I mean, like even shit, like he died in a car crash with his mistress in the car, Mm -hmm. you know, and Lee Krasner was just seen as this like Mrs. Jackson Pollock, you know, like very under the thumb, very in the shadow of her husband. But knowing that she had such like a rich and varied practice that has Mm -hmm. like you know, as equally stood the test of time as his. It just, it does suck that in her own time, it was very much like a woman's work. You're in the, you're in the shadow of your famous husband. Yeah. You know. Even though like we look at your, actually she changed her name a a couple of times. So she is Lee Kreisner because it's androgynous. Mm -hmm. So that when you look at her work, you don't necessarily say that's a woman (laughs) because you're looking at her name. Yeah, and it's um, it's funny that a lot of like women painters, particularly, they have their success like if not posthumously, then like out of their time. Mm, you yeah. know, like you you get like artists that they might have been painting for like fucking eighty years or something like that, but it, it wasn't until I guess times changed enough for people to see them as artists rather than women artists, or mm-hmm. you know, for places to um, and you see it a lot with you know like with black artists and stuff as well. It's yes, just like definitely the recognition only comes when the the eyes on the work change yeah you know and again we're we're looking at new york art scene Mm. very white art scene western Mm -hmm. art scene so in the 60s too in the 60s yeah yeah, very Mm -hmm. segregated art scene so yeah she was the other guy but she shouldn't have been yeah well exactly i mean famous couples you know you see Lee Krasner and Jackson Pollock, you see uh, Frida Kahlo and Diego Rivera. Yep. And it was very much like the husband was the artist. Yeah. The wife was like the little cutesy hobbyist. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're only doing this because your husband does it. When yeah. actually she met Jackson Pollock because they were in an exhibition together, she saw his work and went, wow, mm. need to talk to this guy. She went to his apartment, um, knocked on his door and said, hey, saw your work, loved it. And then they started the relationship start a relationship from there but she in herself had pushed her career herself like she had gotten to the stage of established artist before she met Jackson Pollock so for people to say that you are famous because of your husband is utter bullshit (laughs) (laughs) it's just that now we we look back in history and we a lot everyone knows jackson pollock when whenever you ask someone who doesn't know much about art you go who's jackson pollock they go that's a painter if you say lee krasner they're gonna go who yeah 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 which is sad it is so my other guy is also a gal Maria blanchard was a spanish painter born in 1881 she is known for her Very unique style of cubism. She worked a lot in the avant-garde. A bit about her, she was born with several physical deformities, including a deformed spine, kyphoscoliosis, and bilateral hip disarticulation. So that means that her growth was very stunted. She walked with a limp. And one thing I read that kind of broke my heart a bit was that she used to get teased in school. She used to get Mm. called the witch for the time, like, you know, 1890s. That would have been fucking, that would have been obliterating to hear. Whereas now that's someone's whole personality. Yeah, now that's someone's, like, dream aesthetic. But, like, for her, (laughs) that was probably, like, gutting. Yeah, definitely. So she has these really, like, you know, powerful kind of expressionistic, like almost pre-Francis Bacon artworks. Yeah. Like one of the ones that, you know, I found within the course of kind of like looking her up Mm -hmm. is this fucking beautiful painting called, um, like, I just am now obsessed with this painting. It just, it looks like a Francis Bacon kind of painting, but better. It's called uh, La Breton, which is Spanish for the woman from Brittany. Yes. And it's just this really, like, like atmospheric, like, not really not 
cube is just kind of something in between yeah. like it's like great like it looks in a way unfinished like yeah. it's just this really evocative like beautiful piece and she has a lot of you know like a lot of her cubist work as well a lot of the things that she was known for showing was like cubist still lifes okay i'm gonna pop another one on the instagram i'm just gonna show sid now this is naturaleza muerta which means still life oh yeah so yeah there's another like it it looks like the folding of paper yeah almost. it does yeah. It always it almost looks like arig- or, arigami. origami, <laughs> origami, and it's it's this great thing too. Of she's used the colors of the object, but she's just kind of they're like slightly inverted in a way. Yeah, 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 yeah. And like her paintings just have gorgeousness to them. And at, and at the time, it was said too that the reason that she didn't stand out amongst her contemporaries was because she depicted a lot of still lifes and mm-hmm. she depicted a lot of like mother and child scenes, mm-hmm. and they were kind of written off as like women's painting. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Which yeah. is a real fucking tough nut to swallow because Picasso also did a lot of mother and child paintings. Mm-hmm. He also worked in Cubism. He also worked in the wartime. So yeah. he was a contemporary of her. Yeah. Hugely. I mean, look, we're not even going to get into Les Damoiselles. That's a whole other. Like, Picasso's work, you know, it did stuff. Like, fine. Okay, whatever. Yeah. We're talking about the other guys here. Yeah. Maria Blanchard, however, had just a lot of. Because her work was seen as just women's painting, like mm. fe- like feminized cubism in a way. Yeah. Which, you know, looking at it from from today, you're like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, exactly. this could have been painted yeah. by anyone. Exactly. But I guess at the time, you know, like, particularly because, you know, like Lee, Lee Krasner had, like, purposely made her name quite androgynous. Yes, she Maria did. Maria Blanchard. That's a girl's name. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's a <laughs> for, fan name. For the time, that's a fan name. Yeah. So, like, she tried to kind of make it just off her, like, exhibiting career alone, and then Mm. she she ended up going into teaching. And, you know, sadly, she was, you know, obviously quite sick a lot. In the final years of her life, she became, like, quite immobile. I think she she got tuberculosis as well, and it just stopped her career in its tracks, I suppose. And then she she passed away in 1932. She was only 51. Wow. So a lot of parallels to Carlo there, you Mm -hmm. know, like, channeled a lot of her anger and frustration and, like, just personal tragedies and personal pain into these just beautifully like evocative artworks mm. and i know one of maria blanchard's contemporaries uh was the painter juan gris yep and i know i think he died i think it was in like 1927 mm-hmm. but she was really close with him and after he passed away she entered this period of like just a huge depression yeah i think that was when her career really started to decline unfortunately yeah. there's such parallels to lee krasner as well because once pollock died or through all of the the alcoholism and all that mm. sort of stuff that she had to deal with what was said about it was that she would paint yeah and that yeah. that was like if she was alive she would paint yeah and that was it yeah well that was something that i I read about Maria Blanchard, you know, it's just like all of these things that she went through, she would channel it into a painting. Yeah. Which is why it made me reading it now just so fucking annoyed because it's just like, yeah, here's this woman that is pouring out her pain and like her frustrations and like just trying to deal with her own self through her art and everyone's mm. like, eh, it's woman's work. And I, I do wonder that like, is a connection to your work and to the artist itself, is that something that's that uh, was looked down on? I mean, maybe. Yeah, Yeah, like maybe. What were men doing that was so different that like... Well, fucking nothing because Picasso also did women and child. Yeah, but like what connection did he have to women and child that Maria didn't? Well, I mean, I I fucking don't know what... um, I think Picasso had kids. But I Francis, think he... why don't you know? No, sorry. <laughs> and it's like, you're on Google now. Look it up. No, but um, I think Picasso had kids. I'm almost certain that he did. But yeah. it's like, so why is his painting of woman and child, like, good, groundbreaking, fantastic? And not classed but, as, like, women's... Well, it's not classed as women's work because he painted it. Yeah. But <laughs> it's like, you know, how come that work was so celebrated, whereas this woman's portrayal of her agony at not being able mm. to have a child. Why is that just kind of like, eh, it's, you know, sidelines. Women and their emotions. Yeah. <laughs> that wandering womb of yours. <laughs> so she, in her lifetime, like, didn't have a lot of, like, her, her work, I think she had a couple of just, like, little gallery shows alongside other people. I don't think she had yeah. solo shows. The thing about the other guys is you don't get as much information on them as no, you, you maybe don't, want. do you? I think I got a lot of information on Krasner because through Pollock yeah Pollock yeah <laughs> but yeah I don't I don't think if she did have solo shows I certainly couldn't find much about them or any yeah. about them sorry okay and 
And yeah, a lot of her work, it was shown like in her hometown or Mm -hmm. when she was at art school in Paris, she had a couple of exhibitions there. And then again, she died in 1932. It wasn't until 2012 that it was shown again in her hometown. And it wasn't until 2021 that a museum outside of Spain actually bought one of her works. Wow. Yeah. Other guy indeed. (laughs) Yeah, other guy indeed. So talked a bit about Juan Gris a second ago. Yeah. This beautiful glowing testimonial that he said about one of his dear friends and contemporaries Uh was that she had talent. (laughs) (laughs) So high praise from Jacques there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, not Jacques, Juan. Sorry, sorry. Yep. Jacques Lipschitz, on the other hand. He actually, he had some nicer words. He said, she was a sincere artist and her paintings contained a painful sentiment of unusual violence. Oh, So lovely. that's actually a nice review. Yeah. And that's... For a man in 1930. <laughs> 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 the bench is low. Yeah. And to bring this back to my initial parallel with Frida Kahlo, Diego Rivera actually described her work as being pure expression. Oh, nice. So, yeah. Again, another... Yeah. Nice yep. sentiment. Another nice sentiment. So what the fuck, Juan? Up your game. <laughs> yeah, Had you talent. So- Cheers, buddy. <laughs> Aren't you supposed to be her friend? I was going to say, <laughs> way to back up your mate. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, she's got talent. Yeah. But yeah, so she was one that I had never heard of until yeah, doing this exercise. You know, it's like cubism and like avant-garde art. It's like some of my favorite works from mm. that movement. It's definitely from one of my favorite times in art history. And I'd never heard of her before Yeah. until I did this. And I literally looked up overlooked artists and she was on a list of like 50 other women <laughs> yeah it, like, a lot I was of women like, Oof, okay do you know one of the ones that are like when i googled overlooked artists mm-hmm. as well because mm-hmm. that's how we get to it Le- yeah that's how um, you do it too many googles too like, many googles look up like straight to the point straight to the point uh louise bourgeois uh bourgeois louise bourgeoisie Yes. Yeah. Louise Bourgeoisie. She came up in the list and really? I was like, overlooked? Are oh, you kidding? I mean, maybe. Maybe earlier, but like. Maybe maybe earlier. I mean, I think. She must be one of she's the. She's definitely got some comeuppance. Comeuppance. She's come got up, some She's got now. her comeuppance. <laughs> yeah. She might have been. I don't. I know her work. I don't know enough about her history or her practice, but yeah. yeah maybe. Yeah. I, I don't know much about the historical sort of stuff, but like for her name to come up in there. If I was Frida like, Kahlo came up, I probably would have like emailed the person and, and been said, like, where have you been? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, so that was a fun little two minute Google. You guys now have some other artists that you can look up and add to your list of your favorite artists. Yeah. Because bo- both of these did some fucking amazing work. And Great I think work, it, it is, yeah. is really only because of like their circumstance that they yeah. have kind of been uh, pushed to the side a bit. Definitely. So yeah, we will put any painting that we have talked about today will be on social media. Any articles that we have looked up for this episode, we'll also pop their links in the description below this episode so you can follow us on instagram at barely emerging and at haunted cow collective thanks guys thank you Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to this episode. You can find us on our Instagram at Haunted Cow Collective. Look for the spooky cow. This podcast is by emerging creatives, for emerging creatives, and together we are barely emerging. <laughs>